is Asherman syndrome. Also called as Aminoria traumatica, it describes a condition where because of trauma, the endometrial lining is replaced by scar tissue and varying degrees of intrauterine adhesions are formed. Let's have a look at the pathology. Now, normally during a menstrual cycle, the ovaries are producing estrogen and progesterone hormones that build up the endometrium in anticipation of a pregnancy. Looking at it deeper, we find that the endometrium differentiates into two layers, the deeper basalis layer and the superficial functionalis layer of the endometrium. During menses, it is the superficial functionalis layer that is shed off and the deeper basalis layer is responsible for endometrial regeneration. Damage to the basalis layer of endometrium can occur with procedures like uterine curettage done for abortions or abnormal uterine bleeding, underlying infection, uh, retained products of conception. They further increase the risk of adhesion formation. Now, these factors operate more often in immediate postpartum state when the endometrium is thin and inactive. Therefore, curettage done in the immediate postpartum period particularly increases the risk. Because of damaged basalis layer, new endometrium cannot regenerate, resulting in fibrosis and scar tissue formation. Less likely, but other situations where this can happen is a caesarean section or a hysteroscopic myomectomy or genital tuberculosis or schistosomiasis. The clinical presentation is varied. Women can present with scanty periods, that's hypomenorrhea or amenorrhea. She may also present with uh, infertility or with recurrent uh, pregnancy loss. In those women who present with amenorrhea, if we give them hormones from outside like progesterone or sequential estrogen followed by progesterone, even this will not be able to stimulate the endometrial lining and there will be no withdrawal bleeding. The hypothalamo-pituitary ovarian axis is functioning normally. Follicular growth, ovulation is occurring fine. So the hormone levels, that is the serum estradiol and serum FSH levels are in the normal range. The diagnosis requires imaging. Ultrasound can show thin irregular endometrial stripe. Saline infusion sonography provides better delineation of the endometrial cavity. Women with infertility often undergo tubal patency testing and that is done with the screening in the form of hysterosalpingography that may show filling defects inside the uterine cavity. However, definitive diagnosis requires looking inside the uterine cavity with a hysteroscope by which we are able to visualize the adhesions and we can also see evidence of uh, tuberculosis involvement of the endometrium as well. In the same sitting, instruments can be introduced inside the uterine cavity and treatment can be achieved by hysteroscopic adhesiolysis. After adhesiolysis, adhesions can form again over the raw surfaces of the endometrial lining and this can be avoided by keeping the uterine walls far apart. And this can be achieved by putting an intrauterine balloon catheter in the post-operative period for about 7 to 10 days. Antibiotics are given at the same time. An exogenous estrogen treatment is given for 4 weeks after the procedure to help build up the endometrial lining. To summarize, under the variety of clinical presentations, history of uterine curettage, any intracavitary uterine surgery or tuberculosis should raise suspicion. Women with amenorrhea who have no withdrawal bleeding on progesterone or estrogen and progesterone with normal serum estradiol and FSH levels raise the suspicion. Women with infertility or recurrent pregnancy loss, particularly with history of hypomenorrhea, raise suspicion. HSG and saline infusion sonography can show filling defects. Under any situation, the diagnosis is confirmed by hysteroscopy, which can be diagnostic as well as therapeutic in the same sitting.